Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Monday, November 3rd, 2008. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's 4.30 p.m. in London, 12.30 in Bermuda, 9.30 a.m. in Mexico City. You need to reach us during the broadcast. Phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. Today's birthday, the 1988 Democratic presidential nominee, Michael S. Dukakis, is 75 years old today. Uh, we have two breaking stories. Um, GMAC has announced that it has sold the reinsurance operations of its GMAC insurance unit to Maiden Holdings, the Bermuda-based reinsurer said this morning. Terms were not disclosed, but Maiden said that to help fund the transaction, it plans to raise $260 million of equity from a rights offering to shareholders. Maiden said that it will assume $750 million of loss reserves from the GMAC read business, as well as $200 million of unearned premiums. Following the transaction, Maiden said that it will have at least $1 billion of annual written premiums. GMAC, of course, has been hurt by uh, soaring credit losses at the residential capital mortgage unit, as well as by uh, write-downs of leases on SUVs that drivers no longer want. Um, some uh, natural disaster type news, uh, torrential rains in France have forced the evacuation of hundreds of homes in the eastern central part of the country, as well as having shut down the A6 and A46 motorways. Some areas in the east central part of the country suffered power cuts due to heavy rains that belted uh, the central part of the country Saturday night, uh, but which had stopped by midday yesterday, so presumably most of that is, is back to normal now. Now to our main news. In the latest effort to stem concerns about its capital levels, this morning Hartford Financial Services Group announced that it would have a $2 billion uh, surplus in capital um, excuse me, it projected it would have $2 billion more in capital than it would need to keep its AA credit rating. Hartford shares are down 88% this year, including 75% during the month of October alone. The stock of Hartford lost more than half its value Thursday after Hartford failed to persuade investors that it can endure punishing market conditions without raising more capital. You may recall we reported on Thursday that Hartford posted a $2.6 billion third quarter net loss, hurt by losses on investments in the financial services sector, as well as by its variable annuities business. The company said this morning that its capital margin, the amount in excess of rating agency requirements to maintain AA level ratings, would be nearly $2 billion at the end of this year. This assumes that the S&P 500 index finishes the year at 900. That compares with last month's forecast of $3.5 billion, which assumed that the S&P 500 would finish at about 1165. That, of course, was very optimistic given the events of last month. Chairman and CEO Romney Ayer said this morning that the company is, quote, financially strong and well capitalized. He added that capital levels are more than sufficient for current market conditions and the event markets uh, deteriorate further. However, the steep declines in equities markets combined with much wider spreads in the credit market as well as increased volatility make it, quote, extraordinarily difficult to estimate how much of a capital cushion Hartford will in fact have at the end of 08. Greg McGreevy, the insurer's new chief investment officer, said this last week. However, the company did provide such a forecast this morning in hopes that the information will soothe the worries of some investors. Um, despite not giving an estimate last week, uh, the Chief Financial Officer Liz Latka said that Hartford was comfortable with its capital level. Uh, that didn't quite cut the mustard with a number of analysts. One, uh, Edward Spihar, Merrill Lynch, said, I don't understand how they can say they're comfortable with their capital position, and yet you can't give us any idea what the number is. At this point, it's impossible to say. So uh, we'll see what Mr. Spihar says as a result of the actual numbers that were released this morning. Hopefully it'll be enough. Also, just before we came on the air, the European Commission said that the region's economy probably, in fact, has entered a recession already this year and will continue to stagnate throughout 2009. This, of course, would increase pressure on political leaders to collaborate, collaborate 
on measures to tackle the financial crisis. Economic growth in the Eurozone will slump to one-tenth of one percent next year, the worst performance since 1993. That's according to the EU Commission in Brussels. It also estimated that gross domestic product will shrink for three consecutive quarters this year, and it cut its forecast for full year 2008 growth to 1.2 percent from 1.3 percent. Euro area finance ministers meet today to try to overcome the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. While France and Germany led European governments in committing a combined $1.7 trillion to protect the region's banks, and the European Central Bank now offers unlimited loans in an attempt to get credit moving, there has been no unified government response amongst the whole organization, which is part of the problem. Some good news coming in the U.S. from Boeing. Uh, Boeing is reporting this morning that the machinist union membership has in fact voted to approve a four-year contract offered by Boeing officially bringing an end to the strike that has slowed the airline manufacturer's production and revenue. The vote of approval comes after union leaders and Boeing reached an agreement last week. Boeing's initial contract proposals apparently proved insufficient to union interests. That prompted the walkout in early September. The lost production marked another setback in Boeing's 787 Dreamliner delivery schedule. The walk also may have cost Boeing some $5 billion in lost revenues. The company has acknowledged that the strikes weighed heavily on its third quarter performance. Speaking of third quarter performance, after a difficult third quarter, White Mountains Insurance Group reported a net loss of $277 million after the markets closed Friday. This compared to a net gain of $111 million in the third quarter of 07. The company adjusted its book value downward 9% to $405 per share. According to the CEO Ray Barrett, as I stated in our October 08 pre-announcement, this was a difficult quarter. Our investment performance was the driving factor in our book value decline, with a negative 5% total return on invested assets including a 15% drop in our equity and convertible security investments. That's not so bad, Ray. Underwriting results, he said, in the quarter were mixed. One Beacon's combined ratio was acceptable at 100%. White Mountain Re's combined ratio of 127% included 44 points of catastrophe losses. He says that this was in line with their expectations given the level of catastrophe activity around the world. And another update on the U.S. presidential race. Tomorrow it ends, finally, after 20 months. Senator McCain and Senator Obama enter the last day. As it stands right now, according to the polls that came out this morning, Senator Obama maintains a lead ranging anywhere from 12% to 8% nationwide. Most of the battleground states still continue to favor Senator Obama. In the United States, Senator McCain is sprinting through seven states today and is going to finish up uh, sometime tomorrow morning in Arizona. Meanwhile, Senator Obama is also visiting a number of states today. He appeared in front of 80,000 people yesterday, uh, escorted by the American singer Bruce Spinks Springsteen. And uh, again, the, uh, the mood right now amongst the Democrats is one of confidence. Senator McCain, however, uh, refuses to be counted out and appeared uh, on Saturday night on the NBC television network uh, show Saturday Night Live and uh, apparently was able to poke some uh, good-natured fun at himself and at his campaign. Uh, but it at least will all be over. At this point, 48 hours from now, uh, when we start the show, uh, knock on wood, everything will be finished. So uh, we'll see what that does. The stock markets are up about five points now. They seem to be meandering a little bit. Obviously, whoever does come in is going to have an effect on it. Risk Management Solutions out of Newark, California, uh, released some information this morning. They said that if a big earthquake hits the fault line, including San Francisco Bay, it could cause $200 billion in damages, of which only $30 billion would be covered by insurance. Risk Management Solutions said that the finding came from a study analyzing the impact of a major earthquake on the Hayward Fault. RMS noted that its study was being released in the same month as the anniversary of the 1868 Hayward earthquake, which broke the southern section of the fault 140